What's up guys, I'm Iris L and this is Too Deep. In this video, I want to attempt to answer the question, are demons real? So, how do you even begin to answer this question? Well, let's start with the Bible. Does the Bible actually talk about demons? Well, let's start in the Old Testament with the very first mention of demons. Deuteronomy 32 verse 17. They sacrificed to demons that were no gods, to gods they had never known, to new gods that had come recently, whom your fathers had never dreaded. In this verse, Moses is correcting the people of Israel, and he brings up demons. So Moses was convinced that demons were actual entities. But let's keep going and see if there's any more proof in the Old Testament. Psalms 106 verse 37. They sacrificed their sons and their daughters to demons. Well, the psalmist was referring to the people of Israel when they sacrificed their sons and daughters to demons. So the same problem Moses was referring to in the verses above in Deuteronomy. So there are verses in the Old Testament that speak of demons, but are there verses in the New Testament that speak of demons? So the very first mention of demons in the New Testament was by Jesus when he was speaking of the final judgment. Many who thought they knew, they knew who Jesus was because they did miracles, prophesied, they cast out demons, etc. But they didn't have a relationship with him. They would be separated from him. So Matthew 7, 22. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? So Jesus clearly believed in demons he just didn't think casting them out gave you an automatic ticket into heaven. But that's another video. So the very last mention of demons in the Bible is when is when John is discussing the fall of the of mystery Babylon in the end times, which we'll talk more in depth in in another video maybe. But Revelation 18 verse 2. And he called out with a mighty voice, "Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great." She has become a dwelling place for demons, a haunt for every unclean spirit, a haunt for every unclean bird, a haunt for every unclean and detestable beast. So demons, according to Revelation, according to the revelation of John the Beloved, there are at least, uh, the very least, a symbol of evil. So we know that the Bible talks about demons. Now the next question to ask is, are they just a symbol of evil or are they actual entities? So the first proof I found is that they are worshipped and sacrificed to. So going back to the very first mention of them, Deuteronomy 32 verse 17, they sacrificed to demons that were no gods, to gods they had never known, to new gods that had come recently, whom their fathers had never dreaded. So Moses referred to them as not being gods but because the people were treating them like gods he explains that well they're new gods gods that they didn't know that came recently and whom their fathers had never dreaded now quick little side note the first word gods is the hebrew word elehe but the rest of the gods in that verse are the is the hebrew word elohim why bring that up? I Well, I, I think there's a distinction between the different uses of the Hebrew words for God. But maybe we can look into that in another video. But anyways, um, back to the sacrificing to demons thing. So they sacrificed to demons in Deuteronomy 13, 32 verse 17. And then 1 Corinthians 10 verse 20 through 21. Paul says, No, I... I imply that what pagan sacrifice they sacri they offer to demons and not to God. I do not want to be participants with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the table of the Lord and the table of demons. So Paul doesn't just say that people sacrifice to demons, but he says he doesn't want to partake with them. That you can't take you can't drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons sit at the table of the Lord and the table of demons. So Paul isn't just using demons as a symbolism, but he's talking to them, at, he's talking about them as if they were actual entities that are the complete opposite of God. 
that men and women sacrificed to even during the time of Paul and not just of Moses. So 2,000 years ago, people were still sacrificing to demons. So many sacrificed to them, but they also taught people new things, according to Paul, again, (laughs) in 1 Timothy 4, verse 1. Now, the Spirit expressly says that in later times, some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons. So Paul explains to Timothy that in the last days, people will depart from faith because they will devote themselves to the teachings of demons. So how can a symbol teach? Acts 17 verse 18. Some of the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers also conversed with them with him and some said what does this babbler wish to say others says said he seems to be a preacher of foreign divinities because he was preaching jesus and the resurrection so when paul taught the resurrection the jews in athens said that that his teachings were of foreign divinities now i know what you're thinking That says divinities, not demons. But if you go back to the actual Greek word, daemonion, which means demons, and it's the same word used in the verse above, 1 Timothy 4 verse 1, then it would have to be the same spirit. So let's just keep going. We have demons teaching. And then we also have demons possessing or taking control of humans and or animals. So Matthew 9, 32 through 33. As they were going away, behold, a demon oppressed man who was mute was brought to him. And when the demon had been cast out, the mute man smote, the the mute man spoke and the crowds marveled saying, Never was anything like this seen in Israel. When Jesus casted out a demon, everyone marveled because no one had ever seen this done before. They weren't shocked that there was a demon in the man or that the man was demonized, but that someone actually had the authority to cast out that demon. Mark 9, verse 17 through 18. And someone from the crowd answered him, Teacher, I brought my son to you, for he is a spirit for he has a spirit that makes him mute, and whenever it seizes him, it throws him down, and he foams and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast him cast it out, and they were not able. Now let's just clarify really quick. We don't believe that every single instance of seizures is demonic. And neither did Jesus. He actually clarified between an illness and a demonic attack. So let's just get that straight real quick. <laughs> but anyways, so how can something that can possess other beings as well as be casted out of other beings be only a symbol? How is it not an actual entity? Let's keep going. Symbols don't talk mark 1 verse 34 and he healed many who were sick with various diseases and casted out many demons and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him so whenever jesus casted out demons he wouldn't allow them to speak because they knew who he was how can a symbol speak more importantly how can a symbol know who jesus is how can a symbol know who anyone is it's a symbol it's is it's not It's not an actual thinking, breathing entity. Luke 8, verse 30 through 31. Jesus then asked him, What is your name? And he said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. And they begged him not to command them to depart into the abyss. Now a large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside, and they begged him to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank and bank into the lake and drowned. So they not only knew who he was, but they were afraid of him, bringing judgment before the appointed time. So they were afraid of being thrown into the abyss. 
So how can a symbol, once again, how can it know Jesus, cry out, beg for, um, basically, beg for grace to not be punished, as well as how can it be judged? It's not real, remember? So, if it, if it can talk, if it has a conscience, if it can take over um, another body, like a human or an animal, if it can teach, and if it is worshipped, could it then be more than just a symbol? Maybe, I don't know an actual real entity so if it is real and it's not just a symbol of evil the next question would be are they still active in today's world well when jesus was giving the great commission he said five signs would follow the follow whoever believes the very first sign jesus said was that believers shall cast out demons mark 16 verse 17 and these signs will apply company those who believe in my name they will cast out demons so that's the so if that is the great commission which every believer is called to then wouldn't the effect wouldn't that affect us in today's world so I I I just don't know why it wouldn't because everything else we're like oh yeah that's for us yeah that's for us that's for us everything good is for us but things that we don't quite understand or kind of make us uncomfortable we're like "Mm, maybe not and even as we read earlier paul tells timothy that in the last days which you know hasn't quite come yet many would fall away from the faith because of the teachings of demons let's read that one more time 1 Timothy 4, 1 through 3. Now the Spirit expressly says that in later times, some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to this deceitful spirits and teachings of demons. Now, it goes on to say, Through the insincerity of liars whose consciences are seared, who forbid marriage and require abstinence from foods that God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who who believe and know the truth so demons aren't just entities from the bible that you know were a long time ago and now they're all gone and no they're they're still in today's world because jesus told us that we need to go out and cast out demons now the next question should be so what are they and is satan a demon well In our video, The Beast of the Field, under our Too Deep category on our website or on our YouTube channel, um, in that video, we discuss the origin of Satan, that he is in fact a beast of the field. To be more specific, a serpent. For a quick little summary, Revelation chapter 12 verse 9 says, And the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent who was called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth and his angels were thrown down with him. So John reveals to us that when Satan was thrown down to the earth, as well as he, he, he tells us when, that was around the time Jesus was born, when he was like, oh, let's go kill all the babies. And they had to leave and go to Egypt. Yeah, that as well as his different names and his role in the in the fall of Adam and Eve. So um, John refers to him as the ancient serpent, which relates back to Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God actually say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? So Satan isn't a demon, but instead a beast of the field. Uh, another quick little fact about the beast of the field that I mentioned in the video is that the beast of the field are the only um, animal-like creatures, I, I guess I'll say, that are not under man's feet. So, just keep that in mind. Everything else, God is like, and you will have this, you'll be domi- you ha- have dominion over, you know, birds of the air, 
the livestock, blah, blah, blah. And But he never once mentions the beast of the field. But let's keep going. So if they're not, if Satan isn't a demon, but instead he is a beast of the field, what are demons? So according to the Old Testament, they were a type of spirit that was terrifying that only came recently during the time of Moses. According to the New Testament, demons are unclean spirits. In fact, unclean spirits and demons are often used interchangeably between the Gospels. So for instance, Luke 8 verse 30 through 33, Jesus then asked him, what is your name? And he said, legion, for many demons had entered him. And they begged him not to command them to depart into the, the abyss. Now a large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside and the man, and sorry, and they begged him to, to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the pigs and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and drowned. Mark records the same event, but instead he refers to the demons as unclean spirits. Mark 5, 6 through 13. And when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and fell down before him. And crying out with a loud voice, he said, What have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I adjure you by God, do not torment me. For he was saying to him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And Jesus asked him, What is your name? He replied, My name is Legion. For we are many. And he begged him earnestly not to send them out of the country. Now a great herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside, and they begged him, saying, Send us into the pigs, let us enter them. So he gave them permission, and the unclean spirits came out of came out and entered the pigs, and the herd numbering about two thousand rushed down the steep bank into the sea and drowned in the sea. Real quick, that was like two thousand demons that was in this one dude just whoa the the human in me wants to go like how did they all fit in this one dude how big was this dude but you know spirits don't really take up that much room anyway so we'll list some more verses below on demons and how they are unclean spirits or how they are connected to unclean spirits as well as evidence of demonized people in the bible and some testimonials of demonized people in today's world and um a few of our own experiences with demons but anyways let us know what you all think are demons real and are they still active in today's world if you like the video feel free to like share comment sub and subscribe to our channel but until next time guys god bless